Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. First things first, Happy New Year everyone. Today is New Year's Day in the year 2021. And uh, I know a lot of people are relieved to see 2020 behind them. But you know what, um, I'm not, this, this year isn't really shaping up to be that much better. Uh, you can get down about it if you want, but you know what? I wasn't even down back in 2020. In 2020. I just uh, took it for what it was and, you know, just uh, adjusted my life and moved on. And uh, now I'm just looking the same, looking ahead for the same in 2021 and hoping that uh, we can get through it um, just fine. But we'll see, right? Anyway, uh, today's video. Today I'm going to talk about the rules to the game Global War 1936 to 1945 and you see on my table here there's a rule book. Now I'm going to go through and make a, a whole series of videos on the rules but I, I just wanted to make this video today because we are getting inundated with questions. Me and, and uh, the other designers um, and we don't mind uh, because this is, let's face it, I mean this is a a pretty heady rule book, right? And a pretty uh, um, uh, steep learning curve when it, when it comes to, to, to learning all these rules. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very detailed game and we get it. We understand all the questions. But um, the reason we're getting so many questions lately, uh, I can tell, uh, even though I don't know what the numbers are or anything, but I can tell that there are so many more people who have, have uh, picked this game up in the last little while. Probably a lot of people got it for Christmas, um, but even before that, like in the fall going into this winter, and you know, we were all kind of chained to our homes, not all of us, but many of us. And so a lot of people have picked this game up. And, and that's great. Uh, I find that very encouraging uh, because I think it's a really good game and the more players that are out there, the better it is for all of us who do play the game, right? However, uh, it is it is a difficult game to learn, especially if you're learning it for the first time. And I know that because I just picked the game up a couple of years ago, and there really wasn't a lot of things online uh, that I could find that that helped uh, that helped me. That's why I made a video rulebook for uh, version two of the game. But I, I didn't do a really good job of it though because I didn't really know the rules. Basically, what I said is, hey. Let's, uh, let's figure this out uh, together. And uh, I made a lot of mistakes in that. But this time there, there won't be any mistakes in the next video rule book that I do because the videos will all be checked by this guy right here. He's the guy that wrote the rules. <laughs> so that's Morton and uh, he's over in Europe. So um, before you see those videos, he's going to see them. And if, uh, if I made mistakes, then I'm just gonna remake them. And it won't be that difficult because they're all gonna be very short videos. Uh, I know you're used to really long videos from me, but this time they're going to be short videos because uh, I want you to be able to go directly to where you need to be to find the, the answer to the, the question that you have. Um, but, you know, him and I had a really long conversation the other day, a couple of hours actually, um, about, uh, about all the calls we're getting and everything. Um, some of the questions that are there and some of the questions that we field online and texts text messages that i get and calls that i get and emails and all you know wherever uh, i get questions from and, and i guess he's feeling the same is that they're, they're so basic you know like basic questions that really i mean that we can't figure out why someone would even ask that type of question because you know the the answers are in the rule books uh, or in the rule book and and uh, and some of the questions are just you know like they're really really nitpicky right let's just take a look over here here's my computer here now this is from from the website here let's just take a look here so like you go here to the website and you go to global war and version 3 and then you get here and then you go down to download rules and this is the downloaded rules here now I don't use this very much because like as you're scrolling it, you see, like I'm scrolling right now and it, uh, it takes a while to move. Um, see, like now it's starting to move, right? So um, it's just because of, uh, it's not, it, it's uh, something that's on a website that I'm trying to use. So what I do, like you go up here 
and you download it here, right? You go up to this spot here and you download it. So then, um, let, let me just get out of there. So what, what happens is like, I have it over here on my uh, thing here. And um, so up here, like I have all the, the reference sheets and everything, and I've got the rule book, right? And this works a lot better. See, like, you look there. Like, I can just scroll at will with this one, right? But the other thing is, I don't know uh, on uh, a Windows computer, this is a, uh, a Mac computer, right? But up here, you just click on search. So, like, uh, say I wanted to find out something about a railway, right? I just type in rail, right? And see up there, rail. And then what I do, see, it goes to the first spot where it says rail right um the first place in the rule book and that's on page one so then you got these buttons down here the directional buttons right so if i click the down button it goes to the next place where it says rail and i click the down button again the next place that it says rail down button again and so that's a really quick way of if i have a question about railroads just keep pushing the down button until i get to the point where it talks about um, railroads. And so railroads have a lot of them, but a lot of the things that you would type in here, you know, there might be only two or three places in the rule book. Railroads are a big part of this game. And so, uh, and so scrolling through it could take a little longer than normal. Um, so like here's where you, you actually get to railroads, right? But uh, that had every mention of railroads in the book, right? Um, so I'm just using railroads as an example, uh, but um, that, that holds true for everything. Now, one of the things that you also need to know, like that's the, the nuts and bolts of, of uh, how to play the game. You know, like the movement and the, uh, the costs and, and how to conduct combat, you know, like the mechanics of the game. But one of the things I don't want you to skip over is the beginnings of the rule book. Uh, not so much the acknowledgements. I mean, sure, take a look at that. You'll find out who, who we are, the people that took part in this. But the, the general rules and terminologies, these things in the beginning here, um, that don't seem too important. But there's all that stuff. But there's also the very end of the rule book where they've stopped giving you rules. But uh, it's just the, the designer notes. So if you look through the, the designer and playtest notes, that kind of gives you a sense of why we did what we did like you know what was uh what was uh, the things and and uh, that we're talking about and that we're making rules for like for instance uh the northern sea route it tells you actually about the northern sea route right um and then of course then you, know, you can go in the rule book and find where we try to manifest that in this game right but these are all very important and uh, it, it's not just those things uh uh, but just, uh, you know, like convoy rating aircraft and, and uh, advanced ASW, like all these things are in the back there. And it kind of gives you an overview of, of what it is we're, we're talking about and what we're trying to achieve. Um, and to, when you read the rule book from cover to cover like that, what you're going to find is, is uh, the general theme of the game and the general feel of how it's played. Um, the, the mechanics of the game are only part of the game. You know, the, uh, the combat, how, you, how to conduct combat, and how to move, um, and the, the, how to use the railways and things like that. That's just a part of the game. The other part of the game, in order to um, really understand how to play this game, is to, to learn the diplomacy aspect of it. And when I say that, I mean how the nations relate to each other in the game. Uh, how the major powers relate to each other, of course, is very important. Like who's on whose side and, and things like that. But also, how do the minor nations uh, interact with the major nations? You know, like all of these, uh, we, we, we sometimes refer to them as neutrals, but they're also referred to as minor powers, right? Because they don't all get treated the same. Like there's not just a, uh, a stock... Uh, pro-axis, pro-allies, and, and strict neutrals in this game, right? Like, uh, um, so many of the neutrals uh, or minor powers in this game are treated differently from each other. And uh, that's, you know, that, that's to make it more historical, right? And so, uh, so it's really important to figure out 
um, what those are. And you don't have to memorize every one of those, you know, how each one is treated. But you, what you do need to know is how they're treated basically, like, because most of the minor powers are treated the same way as each other. There's just special rules, like for Sweden, for instance, how it relates to Germany. And, you know, like the, the way the Allies um, uh, um, attack a neutral is different than the other countries. Like there's a penalty that they have to pay to do that because supposedly they were the good guys in the war, right? So if you wanted to attack them in this game, then you kind of had to take a penalty for that just to, um, you know, symbolize that uh, maybe what, you were, <laughs> what you're doing is something that you should pay a penalty for, right? For whatever reason. But, um, but anyway, like, uh, uh, that's something that you really, really need to understand. Spend a lot of time um, understanding the difference between control and, um, and align. Alignment and control are, are really, really important concepts in this game. Um, like, uh, there was a question, I think, last week about uh, somebody was wondering about, you know, like, uh, you trying to use an, an Axis and Ally strategy. They wanted to land a whole bunch of fighters on Moscow there, you know, uh, so that, um, that uh, or they were asking a question about that, if they could do that, uh, land a bunch of Allied fighters on Moscow to save them from Germany, like you see so often in Axis and Allies. I mean, that's just a standard move if uh, the Germans are going going after Russia, you know, like they're concentrating on Russia, that's maybe the only reason you can save them is by sending those fighters or bombers or whatever, but putting aircraft on Moscow, right? Well, that's not a thing in this game. That's just not even possible. First of all, none of the Axis and Ally strategies that uh, you, you've ever employed in that game are going to work in this game, just because the map is different. But also because the um, the the diplomacy is different in this game. Russia is not part of the Allies. There is no way that you're going to see any Allied fighters on Moscow. Um, like you could play a thousand games, and I don't think you're ever going to see the Allies take Moscow. Right? It's just uh, it, it, usually the, those two sides, if they do go to war, aren't going to go to war until late in the game. And I got to tell you, that's going to be a really weird game that that happens in. Because, uh, <laughs> um, you know, for one thing, the, the Axis are going to have to be out of the way for the Allies to go that far down the rabbit hole that they're actually trying to occupy Moscow because <laughs> they've got to get in there first. So there's just no way that uh, the Allies can, can uh, put any units on Russia. Um, without a declaration of war because Russia is not a part of their faction like there's three factions in this game and and uh, so in other words they're neutral to the Allies uh, before there's a, a state of war between them just like all the other neutrals are and so uh, you couldn't even fly over Russia if you wanted because you can't fly a fighter or any kind of aircraft for that matter over a neutral territory right um, one of the things that, uh, that, that is easy to figure out once you th start thinking about it correctly is like you can fly a, an aircraft through a neutral, stri uh, neutral strait. So like early in the game when, when uh, Great Britain is, is uh, not at war yet, that means that they're neutral. That means anybody, any ship can pass through this strait, right? Uh, but an aircraft could pass through there too because you can just go around Britain right? But you can't go through the Suez Canal though, right? With an aircraft because um, uh, this is a neutral country and it's on both sides of the canal. And that's really the difference between a canal and a strait, right? Is that a, a canal goes through a country and a strait goes by the country. Like there's the Denmark strait up there. Denmark isn't on both sides of that strait. It's only on one side of it. But yet Denmark controls that strait. In Turkey, this is a canal because Turkey is on both sides of that canal, right? And so you can fly through a canal, but you can't fly through a strait. So uh, anybody that's ever been uh, bringing planes down here to Abyssinia as the Italian player early in the game, I can tell you that's just not a thing. You can't do that, right? Uh, you start with a couple of planes up in here. There's no way to get them down here. 
Because first of all, you would have to go either through Britain, who are neutral to you, you can't fly over them, or through the through a canal, you can't fly through a canal. So there is no way to get your planes down here at all, short of building a carrier, <laughs> transporting that carrier with the planes on it down here, and then flying into Abyssinia. Uh, that'd be the only way that you could possibly get those planes that are up here on the Mediterranean side down to Abyssinia. So it's things like that that you need to understand the how nations interact with each other. And then when you do that, then you it will make the game a whole lot easier. You know, like the mechanics of the game are something that you can pick up pretty easily. You're already, if you played Axis and Allies before, you already pretty much know how to move units. There are subtle differences. Uh, combat is similar, but it, again, you know, like there's, there's a, a lot of differences, but it's similar in how it's conducted. So that's something that is just, you just need to adjust to. It's the diplomacy aspect that you have to get used to. Uh, what is possible and what is not possible. Um, another question that I got recently or uh, that I've seen recently and I was going to respond to it later today. I always like to check, check, out, out, check it out first uh, in the rule book and if I can't find um, then I like to ask Morton first even though I'm pretty sure that I know the answer to the question. So somebody was asking like could, um, could the Russians or any country for that matter, build a railroad. Let's say Russia owns this territory as they do now. They own a mer, and they want to build a railroad into Eastern Manchuria, and they're at war with the Japanese. Could they, could they build a railroad into there? And the answer is no, you can't. I mean, uh, even though, like I looked in the rule book and the person uh, online said that they looked in the rule book, um, they're correct that it's not in there, but you see, like, not everything is written down. Like, this one should should just be obvious. You know, like, uh, we, we didn't bother writing it, writing it down because uh, how much more obvious can you be? Like, let's say you wanted to build a railroad from here to here. How would you do that in the real world? Sure, you could build it to the border here, but once you got near this river, then the Japanese would start shooting you. How could you build it into their territory? So these are things that, you know, like are, are easy for you to figure out um, if there's nothing in the rule book because we didn't write absolutely everything down. And you can't automatically assume that since it's not written in the rule book, then it must be allowed. Of course it's not allowed. Um, just a second, I dropped some. Of course it's not allowed just because it's not in the rule book. You know, like it, it doesn't say in the rule book that you can't take a blowtorch and, and melt down your your enemy's plastic, but that doesn't mean that you're allowed to do it, right? In, anyway, so in another part of that same question, they wondered, was uh, the Russian player able to um, destroy the railroads in Russia as part of their scorched earth? Now, um, as an example of how difficult this game is, after a few years and after helping uh, to finalize the rules to this game. I still don't know all the rules like I would have thought that no You know like railroads are printed on the map. They're a per permanent part of this game, but um, Talking to Morton today though. He said no no you can do it and it does actually say that in there I just thought that maybe you know like uh, they just overlooked that but it, they didn't you can actually destroy the railroads in Russia but that's the only place you can destroy railroads is in Russia and uh, he says that he does that quite regularly. He actually plays with probably more than 20. When he's playing with playing the Russian, he probably uses more than 20 um, of these damage markers here. So, like, if you wanted to remove railroads, there, there really is no, no markers for that. So, you just say, okay, I'm going to remove this railroad, and I'm going to remove this railroad, or you could just say, I'm gonna remove all the railroads. Like you could remove all of the railroads in Russia. He said it's a real pain in the ass to the Germans when you do that. Um, and I just never would have considered that you would do that. And so questioning him further, um, you, uh, you wouldn't pay the repair costs, even though you're using a damage token on there. There's a difference between the damage cost and the repair cost, and it's twice as much basically. Like it costs uh, one to repair damage of a railway, but it costs two to construct it. And we're talking in uh, without mountains, 
uh, mountains it would be cost of four and damage of two, right? Well, this uh, in, in this case, you would actually pay the construction cost if Germany wanted to reconstruct all those or any any section of railroad, right? Um, and so uh, um, that's the way that rule works. And it, it surprises me, but, but apparently uh, Doug's probably going to sell out of these damaged drill markers now. <laughs> Usually when I make a video on something, uh, that's what happens, right? Um, is uh, people start doing it. So now people are going to start destroying all the railroads in Russia and that's going to be a pain in the butt. I can't imagine why you would do them all. Like you would probably just do all the ones that are up near the border here, you know, and then as the game progresses, maybe you might destroy some, but I can't see why you would destroy that rail link over there unless the Japanese were getting close. And even by then, I mean, uh, Russia's probably done for, right? If, uh, if, you, if you're having to destroy all your railways, then you're probably not going to um, not going to last much longer. But let's be clear about this. So Russia is the only place in the in on the map that you are going to be able to damage or destroy your own railways. Um, there's no provision in the rules that allows for say the French player, you know, that knowing that the Germans coming in there. There's no provision in the rules for the French to to destroy their own railways or for Germany to come in there and destroy the French railways uh, before the French come back. Um, even though you would think that would be a thing, it, it, it's just not. There's, it's just not in the, um, a thing in the rules where you can do that. The only, way, the only thing you can do is to damage a railway, and the only way to damage a railway short of, of uh, using an expansion set is with strategic bombing. And, and it's not that difficult to strategically bomb a railroad. They don't have inherent anti-aircraft guns, so they would have to have an anti-aircraft artillery. But, uh, but having said that, it's, it, it seems pretty obvious that you couldn't damage your own railways because you can't strategically bomb yourself, right? So, I mean, these are the kinds of things that you don't have to, to, to ask somebody else a question on. You just have to think about it. Because the things that we didn't write down are traditionally things that are, are just basically common sense, right? Um, there are some things that we missed for sure, but most things are things that you can think about. And if you've looked through, like if you searched through, like I showed you there, you type rail and go down, down, down. If you search through for what you were looking for and you can't find it, and you're sure that it's not in the rule book, then, uh, then talk to your playgroup about that. Say, hey, what should we do here? Because um, that, that's, that's definitely a thing, right? There are situations in this game that have never come up before, and so they haven't even been thought of. So it, it's okay for you to, to make up your own rules for that. Um, but what, what I would encourage you to do, though, is make them good rules. So, like, if I'm the Russian player and it's going to be helpful to me to do something and there's no rule for it, then, of course, I'm, I'm going to want to do that. But you have to think further down the road, you know, like, okay, I'm not always going to be the Russian player. This isn't, I'm not always going to be on this side of the argument. So try to make it um, a rule that, that, that fits for, uh, for the game, not, not for your country in that particular game, but fits for the whole game and, and, and seems to work. And remember that there could be five different solutions to the same problem. So let's say you pick a, a solution to it and then you play it out, right? You play that game out and you think, well, geez, that didn't really work. It was kind of unfair to these guys or to, to me or, or to whatever. Um, maybe say, you know, like the next time you're going to play, uh, say, listen, I thought about this. What if we tried this instead? You want to try that because that, that last one didn't really seem to pan out very well. You know, just talk about things amongst yourselves and, and try to come to some kind of consensus. You know, uh, make sure that you finalize the rules within your own group and uh, you know it's not that any different than deciding which of the um uh, of the rules that you're going to use for this game because you know like a lot of the rules in this game are are optional right like terrain i mean you don't have to play with terrain you can play it like an axis and allies game where everything is like a paved parking lot and you can just drive over mountains and drive over uh, desert and drive over uh, tundra and 
<laughs> and jungles, you know, uh, speed through them like nothing, right? Um, but to me, you know, like that's why you would choose this game over that one is because there is a difference in the terrain and there's, you know, like there's, there's more to it than that. And the other thing is, I was talking with another friend of mine last night. He, he's playing this game for the first time and he thinks there's too many units in the game. And you know what? It's, uh, it's overwhelming at first, the number of units in the game and the number of rules in the game. And plus, it's the cost is, is large as well. Like, um, there's three cruisers in the game, and they're not that much different than each other. They actually, they basically do the same things. They just use different numbers. If there's too many units for you to purchase or to play with to begin with, then don't worry about it. Just play with regular cruisers. Uh, in this game, they're heavy cruisers. So just play with regular cruisers, and then someday say, you know what? Uh, we're getting pretty good at this game. Uh, I think I'd like to try light cruisers. Then throw them in, you know? Um, or throw light and battle cruisers in. Uh, you don't have to play with all the units that come with this game. You can agree ahead of time to not play with heavy tanks or, you know, or whatever, right? Uh, whatever suits your play group, it's okay to change the rules on that. Um, or to, you know, um, to start this game off slowly. Like you could start, play your first game without terrain and then your second game with terrain, you know what I mean? Um, although, I, to, if it was me, and, and it was me at one point, I went right with terrain right away because that's really what you're learning is, is how to modify your dice rolls by using terrain and stuff, right? And, uh, and using the other types of terrain. Cities, you know, like learning how the, the, I made a video about that a few months ago about cities and, and how to use them to your advantage and how to, um, avoid having them be a disadvantage to you like these are all things in this game that that you need to master um and the units there's a lot of units in the game like i said and, and learning how to master those units is, is part of the equation uh for being successful in this game and, and for getting the full enjoyment out of them um i i didn't do much uh convoy raiding uh when i first started most of the convoy raiding takes place here in the Atlantic. Uh, with all the other things that I'm trying to learn to play the game, um, convoy raiding was, is, is kind of complicated, right? And so I just didn't do much of it. Like I think I tried it once or twice in a game. But, um, you know, like after you start getting the other things down, okay, well, let me try convoy raiding, you know? And then another game down in the future, okay, let me try st strategic bombing, right? Uh, and then kind of add that uh, to your repertoire of, of, of things that you can do in the game. You don't have to be an expert player the first time through. Nobody expects you to be an expert player the first time through. Um, just to, really, it's, it's just about having fun and it, it's, it's about the challenge. Um, the, the other thing is that it's about the players, it, it, much more so than in, in Axis and Allies. In Axis and Allies, uh, it's just one side against the other, and you know who <laughs> you know who your allies are. You know who your enemies are. This game is not like that. This game is a, a three-way game, and there's a lot to, a lot that can come from that. Uh, not just on the board, but above the board, where where the where the people's spaces are. You know, and it, it's not necessarily about what's going on in the game. Like I played a game once and. Uh, the Russian player was renting a room off the German player, and I was the I was the allies, and and I could not get that Russian player to attack the German player, even though it was in his best interest. Even though I said the German is about to attack you, you have to do something. He still wouldn't do it. He waited, and then the German attacked him, just like he was going to, and there was no way that I could do anything as the allied player in the game, because uh, of the interaction between the players. So that's something that you can't rule out. That's something that you have to have to uh, develop a skill for. You know, <laughs> like I don't know if married couples should ever play this game against each other. But then again, that that goes true for for just about every game because most game is most games are more about the players and not just about the nations on the board. Uh, that's usually just a war game thing, right? But uh, that's something that you need to consider, and even within your own um, within your own faction, right? 
like the the British player, he can say no to the French player. You know, if the French player wanted to use one of his railways, right? You could say, no, no, I'm not going to let you use it, you know, because I wanted you to attack that guy and you wouldn't do it. So, you know, if this is the only way I could teach you a lesson by uh, losing this game, then that's fine. I'm willing to lose this game or to, to, to take a big chance at losing this game just to teach you a lesson. Like, don't dick around with me, okay? <laughs> if I ask you to attack that guy, then I mean it, you know, like, just just do it. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a lot of fun to be had in the interaction among the players and that was by design uh, when it comes to supply paths and, and lend lease and things like that there's a lot of cooperation or lack of cooperation in this game and so these are other things that you need to master um, and to get well not necessarily, not necessarily master but to do well to be successful right I mean, mastering them would be the ultimate goal, but really, I mean, you're just having fun, right? Um, being competent at these things is something that, that you should strive for. Uh, more than anything, what you need to strive to do is to learn the rules, to read them back, front to back, and not to just go online and just ask the question right away. You know, I, I know that's easy and, and quite often you get an answer and everything, but you're not going to learn how to learn how to use the rule book if you keep doing that. Uh, I understand that you need to go there as a last resort, but um, the first thing that you should do is look in the rule book and to try to search through the rule book. I find that whenever I go to the rule book to find something, I always find three or four other things that I didn't know. You know, when in searching for what happens with a railway, you know, I, I, I found out something about supply, you know. <laughs> I You know, it's just, uh, because you're looking in, in various places. Uh, not necessarily just finding out other rules, but finding out where things are. Oh, that's interesting, so that's where that is. Or as you're looking things up, um, you know, okay, now I know where to go back to when I'm looking for something like that. You know, uh, that's one thing I can do is go just about uh, every time I can go to the, the spot in the rule book that I need to find a rule. Uh, even if I need to look it up and, and to interpret it, at least I know where it is. And that comes from using the rule book. You just keep going back and back and back. And that was the same with Access and Allies too. Having a, a YouTube channel, that was something that I hadn't considered before I started my channel was that people are going to be asking a million questions of you like you're some kind of expert or something. You're not really, you're just, you know, you're just another guy that plays the game. But eventually you become an expert uh, if you care enough to answer those questions. I've stopped answering most of the questions about Axis and Allies because I don't play that game much anymore. And um, there's so many other places to find answers for your questions, right? Uh, I'm not trying to ignore people. It's just, um, I just think it would be better to go to somebody else uh, to answer those questions. But this game, I don't mind answering questions, but the silly questions about, you know, like, um, what does this cost? I mean, look it up, dude. <laughs> I mean, it's right there. Like, you can find that in four different places, you know. Uh, you know, that's just, uh, there's no excuse for that, right? Like, uh, unless uh, you just don't have a rule book. <laughs> you don't have any reference sheets. Although, I'm not sure how you could possibly play the game without your your references like that but just look it up it, it'll make you a better player because you'll learn the rules a lot better if you keep looking up and if you can't find it sure ask the question uh, I'm not trying to dissuade anybody I'm just I'm, I'm trying to help you to become better players and that's how you will become better players is by learning the rules um, like you, you wouldn't know how to use cities to your advantage if you didn't know the rules regarding cities and it's not just uh, you've read the rules it's it's really taking the time to understand them you know to think about them oh you know what if i just put a lot of dudes in there i don't need tanks because dudes are going to defend at five tanks are going to defend at five so why don't i just use dudes they cost half the price right things like that things that that uh, maybe you hadn't considered yet but if you keep reading the rule book and you keep getting more and more proficient at it then they're going to come to you easily right so anyway that's all i got and i'm going to try to get to the rule book uh it's been really difficult for me i gotta be honest with you my health is not good and even right now i could feel uh after just making a video this long how really exhausted i am 
Um, so trying to make a whole video rule book, that's going to be a real challenge for me. But I'm going to try, uh, even if I have to just make it a little bit at a time, right? But uh, this is why I'm not playing in, in uh, the game that's going on online. Uh, the guys asked me to play and I appreciate that, but I just, uh, I just don't have the capacity right now. And, and so I wish them well and I, I encourage you to go and check out the YouTube war on Global War 36 right now. Uh, if you just go to Panzer King's channel or Hilltop Pillbox's channel or Fortress Jinx's channel, you will find the videos for those and they will, they will have links to the other channels. Uh, so that's a, another way of learning the rules is by watching their videos because with the mistakes that they're making, then other people are chiming in. And that's also another way that I'm learning the game is whenever I put a game on, people are going, hey, you can't do that. And then I look up the rule, damn, he's right. <laughs> so, so that's another way that you can learn the rules uh, anyway. That's all I got for you today. So, uh, learn the rules, everyone. Take care. General Hand Grenade out.